Okay, my name is David Carpenter, and uh, today we're going to prove some of the things we've been talking about, grounding, bonding, and shielding. And remember, we've been telling you that really the purpose of that is to control objectionable currents. And so we anticipate some of those currents and how they're going to control them, we're going to, or how they're going to occur, and we, we are going to show you that today. What I have here for you is a setup of a real-world application. For you that don't necessarily understand or don't agree or don't quite see how the equipment ground works, we're going to prove it to you today. We're going to, we, you've already seen or you've already heard about some of the different laws and theorems that we've shared with you, but now we're going to talk to you and show you here how they actually really work in real-world application. So let me show you what I've got here. We've got a setup where we have power coming in. We have right here is a grounding bus. This grounding bus houses the equipment ground and the neutral. The hot leg then goes from this input side through the switch, then through this break, circuit breaker. From the circuit breaker, we're going to this receptacle, excuse me, to this receptacle. And then from the receptacle, we're going to go to this fan in a few minutes. We'll show you how that works. Now, keep in mind, we've always told you this, that the equipment ground must be isolated on the secondary side of the overcurrent protection. That's very important. Now, we've tried to tell you that, and what we want you to do is understand the theorems or the reasons behind grounding, bonding, and shielding, not just do this or don't do that, because that way you can make and recognize the different opportunities or the different situations that you run into and then how you should do that. So if you get this in your mind and you get the understanding of the purpose, then you can apply that to any situation you run into. So let's do it. For those that don't believe, first of all, let's look at our situation here. And we've got a fan, and I'm going to hook it up to where it's plugged in at this point. Here's a hot leg, equipment ground, and of course this is your neutral. So first thing we're going to do is we'll turn that on. So as you can see, the wiring is correct, but this is hot at this point. So I'm going to cut it off at this time. And we're going to hook up the equipment ground at this location. We'll hook up the neutral, just like you would in a real world environment. And they're going to be hooking up to this motor. This is also a grounding position as well. And let's see here. All right, we've got it hooked up, ready to go. So let's turn the power on. Got everything on. Okay. As you can see, the fan's blowing. No problem with the fan. As you can see, I actually touched this ground reference. We're going to test it for voltage. And so, what we're going to do is touch one side to your grounding bus and then touch here as well. As you can see, we get zero voltage. Also, what we call the light test or the old light test. It's not on. Oh, meter's not on. Let's turn the meter on. We gotta turn the meter on. That's important. So we'll uh, so we can prove that to you anyway. So we got our meter on. And uh, as you can see we have no voltage from this point to this point. And we're gonna also do the old light test. So we'll see how our light works and we're gonna touch from the grounding bus coming in to the ground location here and as you can see there's no power there. Now what I'm going to do is cut this off. What I'm going to do here is, is simulate just as though the winding uh, in this motor has uh, maybe faulted over to the housing. And so what I'm going to do is take the hot leg and I'm going to go over here at this point and just tie it right to the uh, ground. Okay? I'm going to take the equipment ground and we're going to cut it off. We're simulating the same thing that happens when someone doesn't bring the equipment ground to the, like, to the lighting, receptacle, or power. Uh, again, we're looking at the secondary side of the overcurrent protection. And what we're going to show you is that it will continue to energize this motor and it won't trip the breaker. Now, one of the reasons I developed this is because 
folks that don't understand overcurrent protection didn't fully understand how this works, so we actually did this demonstration to prove it. And so let's turn everything on. The question is, will it trip the breaker since we actually have the hot leg on the equipment ground at this point? And the answer is no. But the problem is, you've got a circuit now that is working, but if anybody touches this equipment ground, they're going to get shocked. It's going to hurt them. And, and I'll explain, I'll, I'll prove that to you right here as we touch. You can see I can touch the light here now to the grounding, to the equipment ground, and you can see there's voltage there. If we take uh, the tester and we go from the grounding bus, excuse me, from the grounding bus to the ground terminal, you should see voltage there. And you, may, you probably see voltage here as well. Okay, it's going to be probably uh, approximately 120 volts around that area. So this is energized, I don't want to touch it. But a lot of folks will tell me, especially when they improperly ground the system, and we're looking at it before it's put in or it's commissioned or it's put into operation, what's the problem the system's working? Well, working is not a real good indication sometimes. Just because this system is running doesn't mean it can't kill you, because it can when this metal housing is energized on the motor, now it's a potential not only to hurt someone, but any sensitive electronic equipment, which we'll show you later on, associated with this now has the opportunity to have this equipment ground tied into it. For example, if this was on an industrial machine where you have processors uh, consistently on that machine, every processor now is subjected to this current. Although it may not be enough and, uh, to, to destroy the semiconductor, it can destroy it over a period of time. So let's stop right here. We're going to hook this up correctly. And so this time what we're going to do is actually put the equipment ground in. So that's all we did. We cut the equipment ground before. We're going to leave it just like it is. And we're going to see if the overcurrent protection really works in this situation. Again, now the argument has been for years. Why, what is the problem here? Why do we have to isolate the equipment ground and the neutral on the load side? Because they're always going to come back and touch each other at the panel board. I understand that reasoning. But as you learned in Ohm's Law, and as we've taught you through Thor uh, Thevens and Norton's theorems, that that doesn't work. And so well, let's just see it. Let's just see it work in, in real life and let's just see what happens. Will it trip the breaker or will it not? It did trip the breaker. It did what it's supposed to do. And uh, so we're in good shape. Let's, uh, let's fix this in the right manner now. And we'll take this off. See if we're working correctly. We uh, reset our breaker over current protection device. Now, as you can see, the fan's rolling, everything's fine. Again, we'll check it. Let's make sure that we don't have any voltage. As you can see, there's zero voltage showing up right here, as should be. We take our light test, which everyone likes to see. You can see we have no voltage there. You go to the equipment ground, you have no voltage. Again, the only purpose of the equipment ground is to facilitate a ground fault. That's the only purpose for it. The neutral carries the unbalanced current. So now you see it, now it's your opportunity to believe it as it is and use that. Keep in mind, we always isolate the equipment ground and the neutral on the load side of the overcurrent protection. You do that, everything else will work in fine and you won't have objectionable currents running all over the system. That is an issue because it's gonna destroy equipment and it can get folks killed, okay? Hope you enjoyed.